speaking today on the subject behind bars. Can I just ask you a question while you're finding your place? It'll be on the screen as well if you don't have a copy of God's Word. How many of you, come on, let's be, be real and honest today. How many of you feel like at some point in your life, maybe not physically, maybe some of you physically because this is Soul Quest Church. Come on, amen. But, but maybe not physically, but maybe spiritually, emotionally, mentally, relationally, financially, you have felt like that you were behind bars. Come on, anybody in the house? Sometimes we get behind bars, and sometimes where we're behind bars, we've caused it and we've created it ourselves. But other times we get behind bars, we've just been trying to live for Jesus. And somehow, some way, we end up in a jail cell of life, and we think, God, what have I done? How did this happen? And God, how do I get out? Come on, folks, be real. You know what I'm talking about. You've been there. We've all been there. Paul and Silas prayed. I mean, that's what he says in verse 25. The Bible says in verse 25 that he prayed, that they prayed. Now, let me ask you something. Is prayer often the first thing on your mind when you're going through some tough stuff in life? Come on, let's just be honest. I, I mean, sometimes the pity party starts. I, I mean, sometimes we begin to say, but God. Why? God, I've been serving you. I've been set up. The setup team, man, I'm here. I'm in the parking lot. I'm, I, I'm, I'm coordinating some donuts. I'm making some strong coffee. I mean, I've cleaned out the toilet. I've been in the, I've done every. I've greeted at the door. I mean, I've given a tithe. I've given an offering. God, I don't get it. I don't understand why, 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 God, why? Sometimes what we don't do but we need to do is pray. You know what the Apostle Paul prayed for? He prayed for other people. Wow. You know, sometimes when we get our minds off of ourselves and put our minds and our hearts and our burdens on other people and begin to pray for other people, then sometimes our situation doesn't seem to be as bad as it is. I really think that one of the biggest problems we have in America today and in the American family and in the American church is selfishness. What about me? Well, what about others? I think that marriages fail because of selfishness. I think affairs happen because of selfishness. I think people are getting into, a, into financial bondage because of selfishness. Sometimes we just think about ourselves. And the Apostle Paul, man, he's behind bars in Rome, and he could have said, God, I'm your number one man. I mean, God, I'm, I'm Paul, man. You saved me. You changed my life. Man, I'm changing the world for you. And this is what I get for it. God, please get me out of this place. He didn't do that. He prayed for others. I mean, when, when all of life is caving in around you when, you, when when you spiritually are not strong, but you find yourself weak, when you find yourself, you've drifted away from God, and the next thing you know, you're behind bars in your own spiritual walk with God. Maybe in your relationship, maybe your marriage is falling apart. May, maybe your finances are upside down and bankruptcy is right around the corner. And man, you find yourself in, in chains or behind bars in the prisons of life. What do you do? Try praise. While they were behind bars, they were singing and praising Jesus. What were they singing? Well, every church thing, they were singing the songs that they sing. I don't know exactly what they were singing. You know what they may have been singing? My favorite hymn out of the Baptist hymnal, Victory in Jesus. They were singing Victory in Jesus. How can they be victorious behind bars? Because it doesn't matter where you find yourself. As long as Jesus is in your heart, you have victory. 
The other prisoners were really paying attention. They were listening attentively. Why? Well, because they saw these two men who were in a situation that was not good, and yet while they were there, they were still giving God praise and glory for who He was. Their lifestyle and the way they acted while they were behind bars was a testimony to everybody around. You want to win somebody to Jesus? You got somebody in your life that, man, they just have a hard time with God. They have a hard time believing in God. Maybe they're atheists. Maybe they're agnostic. I mean, maybe maybe they, they just uh, don't get this church thing, this God thing, this relationship with God thing. Let them watch you in the midst of a storm in your life. Let them watch you behind bars because I promise you, every single one of us are going to be in a storm. We're either in one now, we just came out of one, or we're about to go in one. Everybody in this room, everybody that hears this message today, every single one of us are going to be sometime in our life behind bars. We're going to be in some kind of prison, and while we're there, the world, when they see us, When they see us praying to God and praising God and living for God and trusting God and knowing that God's got some reason for allowing you to be in that mess that you find yourself in, then the world's going to see that. They're going to know what you're living is true. Whatever you find yourself going through, whether it's health, whether it's occupation, whether it's relational, whether it's addiction, listen to me. Listen to me. God uses people. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But I'm telling you here today, God can change your life in a moment. In a moment. God can send an earthquake to shatter everything, to break it down, to build you back up. That's our God.